Hi guys, it's ASPYT and this is the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 and it's been making waves in the tech industry due to, of course, that whopping 108 megapixel camera. How good is the camera actually because of it? And most importantly, should you part with your hard earned cash and possibly look at this as your next daily driver. I'll be showing you what happened in the quick unboxing that I did, and I'll be talking you through my experience over the last few days in using it. Things I like, things I don't so much. So without further ado, it's review time. Let's get straight to it. First up, design, and of course it's the almost given metal and glass sandwich with Gorilla Glass 5. We've got curves both front and back, and to be honest, in terms of appearance, is very, very similar to the Huawei P30 Pro. The same water drop notch, which houses a 32 megapixel front selfie camera with f2.0 aperture, but more on that shortly. The same infinity edge display with small bezels, but not the near disappearance like phones with a waterfall display like the Vivo Next 3 or the Mate 30 Pro. The same vertical camera alignment on the back left, apart from the additional fourth and fifth lens five cameras on the back. Where on earth are we going to be in 2025? I must also add this camera arrangement is an absolute nightmare for the left-hander. Lenses four and five are positioned slap bang in the natural resting place for the index finger. If you're a righty, you're going to be fine. The same brand text location on the bottom left and it even looks like the exact same font size as well. The same button configuration on the right hand side with the power button and the volume rockers above. Little side note for all smartphone manufacturers, please follow suit and just leave the power button like they've done on the Mi Note 10 in the natural resting place of the thumb. Don't make a stretch all the way up. It just seems so unnecessary. IR blaster, Type-C port, mono bottom firing speaker, which is okay. It doesn't really distort at loud volumes and the top volume is loud enough also. And we have a headphone jack. We're winner, winner chicken dinner. So putting similarities between this and the Huawei P30 Pro design wise aside, let's finish the rundown before we get to everyday use. So we have a 6.47 inch AMOLED display, 2340 by 1080 with a peak brightness of 600 nits. Not industry leading brightness, but it does okay in outside daylight. And you've also got an always on feature, or as they say, ambient display. And this is very easily customizable within your settings. Now the display isn't as good as the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, for example. It's not as smooth as the OnePlus 7T or the Realme X2 Pro, Asus Rogue Phone 2, etc. But for the price, it's certainly competitive. The curved display appears to be cosmetic only as there doesn't seem to be any additional features. And truth be told, and it may just be me, but I've found accidental touches a bit of a problem compared to other curved display smartphones. It's not all the time, it's not half the time, it's just noticeable in a non-deal breaker way. One thing that could be a deal breaker for a lot of you is battery. And we've got some good news. 5,260 mAh battery capacity, huge, massive cell. And we do have a fair hefty weight to this device as a result. You know you've got a bit of kit. You also have fast charging with the included 30 watts fast charger in the retail box. Now in terms of daily use, the battery life is really, really solid. I did feel for the cell size that I would get a little bit more possibly something Xiaomi can look at in terms of battery optimization, but I'm still getting to the end of the day with sort of 20, 30% in average and not overly strenuous workload. Battery's decent. It's running the updated MIUI 11 over the top of Android 9 Pie. And there are some things here that I like, and there are also some quirks that I'm not so keen on. It's very iOS-esque with the fact that there's still no app drawer, for example. So you have to have all of your apps on your home pages, there's no way of hiding anything. Quite why Xiaomi and Apple still do this in 2019 is a bit beyond me. But at least you can order your apps from the bottom up, unlike on iPhones. There's also a fair bit of unnecessary bloatware apps, which is again common with all Xiaomi devices that are running with MIUI and not Android One. 
Outside of that, it's fast and fluid with eye-pleasing animations and the gestures are basically the same as on Android 10. So swipe up from the middle to go home, swipe up from the middle and hold to go to your recent apps and swipe in from the left or in from the right to go back. There's also within MIUI some cool little tricks like multiple app deleting, dark mode, hide the notch, raise to wake, double tap to wake, etc. Now there's one model here. We've got six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. And the SOC in here is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730. Now, if you're a tech snob, you'll go, hmm, 700 series. It's not the big roller. It's not the 855 plus, which all of the top flagships have. And while you would be technically correct, in everyday use, if you're just using this phone and you don't have them completely side by side and you're nitpicking, I personally think it's quite hard to tell the difference. Now we're gonna jump onto the much hyped standout feature of the Mi Note 10. And that is of course the camera and more specifically 108 megapixels. So quick overview of the camera on the front, as mentioned, we've got a 32 megapixel lens and it's good, it's not excellent. In nice natural lighting, it does a decent job and edge detection is mostly on point. It's slightly soft for my liking, AKA kind of a beautify mode. And this is a fairly common theme with a lot of Chinese manufacturers. And to be fair, some people like that look, that sort of airbrushing effect for the gram. For the gram, I, I can't get away with for the gram. For your social media, I'm pretty sure you'll be impressed with the results. Now onto the rear camera setup, which includes not one, not two, not three, but five cameras. When you use the standard photo mode, it won't give you the highest possible resolution. You can select normal, ultra wide, two times optical zoom, five times optical zoom, and up to 50 times hybrid zoom. And while zooming capabilities won't be for everyone, I have really, really enjoyed experimenting with that whopping 50 times hybrid zoom. What you can zoom in on and see is pretty breathtaking. And on top of that, the stabilization that far zoomed in is, a, is it does a good job. In terms of photos on the whole, you can get some brilliant shots with incredible sharpness and detail. And due to all of the included lenses, you really do get a lot of options to capture the scene perfectly. The pictures don't quite have the same vivid saturation levels of the iPhone, for example, but some would argue the color temperature is more true to life. Portrait mode works really well if the subject is stationary, but not quite so good with a moving target. In this situation, things can get a little blurred. And I do notice a, a difference here between something like this and something like the Google Pixel 4, which is a lot more software based. There's far more post-processing on that, which means that the shutter speed is a bit quicker and therefore you tend to get less motion blur. I'm not saying every moving photo is bad, it's just a bit indifferent. And that idea of the battle between hardware and software in a camera and finding that happy medium transfers again onto the 108 megapixel mode. And this is where we hit trump card and chump card. <laughs> For starters, the resolution is obscenely good. 108 million pixels. So if you like to take photos for your computer or for special projects, etc., the detail you can get here is truly amazing. But on the other hand, the software of the camera app doesn't quite tally with this. It's laggy and slow in this mode and it loads the picture in low res first and it's only once you zoom into specific areas that it shows you the enhanced pixel quality. And also in this mode, when you take a photo, it tends to take an age to actually process so you can see what you've taken. And Personally, as good as the actual pictures can be, it's that lag that causes an issue for me and makes me almost not want to use that. It's very similar to the Nokia 9 PureView and hopefully, I don't know whether they can, but maybe Xiaomi can produce a firmware update which improves that sort of processing time. But for now, great photos, no doubt. Just feels a little bit half-baked software-wise. So overall, the Mi Note 10 is a tough one to call and it's classic Xiaomi. It's another device from them, probably their thousandth of the calendar year, which is very difficult to place on the market. It simply mirrors many of their devices that they've already dropped this year. Some brilliant industry leading flagship features, but also some omissions and flaws that we've come to expect from their upper mid range devices. 
this continuing move from Xiaomi to create so many devices that are so similar can surely only confuse the consumer, you guys, into not knowing what Xiaomi device is best for you. In fact, it's so confusing, I can almost guarantee that there'll be some of you out there that have been looking at Xiaomi devices, but there's been so many, you get so bogged down with it that you've ended up going elsewhere where it's been a little bit more simplified and clear what you're gonna get for the price. This isn't by any means a personal attack on Xiaomi. I love a lot of their devices. It's more of a plea just to declutter some of the smartphones that you produce next year. Bring out less products and really simplify the buying structure and make it far more apparent where in the market that device should be placed low end, mid range, even upper mid range, and then flagship four areas really, instead of having so many devices all bunched in and around the mid range to upper mid range area. That's just my opinion. You may not care, Xiaomi may not care, who knows? If you do care or you've got an opinion about this device or Xiaomi in general, let me know in the comment section below. I would love as always to hear your thoughts. As always, these videos do take quite a while to make, so if you did enjoy it and found it helpful and think others might, drop a like, share it, and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you like tech, news unboxings, reviews. I love you. See you in the next one. Peace out.